Although I've lived in Colorado for quite a while, I'm actually from the Deep South, where we're known for our genteel manners. In fact, I can insult you in such a way that you think it's a compliment. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> but even though I'm genetically engineered to be polite, this goes much deeper than surface compliments. We're talking about acknowledging the people around us every day in truly genuine and sincere ways. A few months back, I was talking with my friend Steph, and she's doing amazing work with young people in our community. And I just said, I am so proud of you. She welled up with tears and said, no one ever says that to me. And I was taken aback because I thought, someone that's truly changing the lives of teenagers, if she's not hearing it, then who is? So I started thinking about it some more, and I just thought, when do we get too old to hear that we're doing a good job or that we're appreciated? Because really what it boils down to is that we're visible to someone else. Now, I'm not talking about those surface things of, how are you, fine, you, yeah. I'm not talking about that. In fact, I just learned that in the German language, there's no such phrase for how are you because they feel it is so disingenuous. The only people they see things like that to are people that are very close to them. And if someone they don't know well asks them that, they're insulted. So I have really decided we never age out of hearing that we've done a good job, hearing something positive, hearing <clears throat> that we're appreciated. As a teacher, I've taught from kindergarten through 12th grade. And I've noticed that little kids are really good at giving praise. Oh, that dragon picture you made, that's the best dragon picture ever. To me, it looks like a naked mole rat. But to them, it's the best dragon picture ever. Then I watch my students get older. And the compliments just don't come as freely as they used to. And then we reach adulthood with our tunnel vision on our day-to-day -day lives. I think we become a little bit more judgmental. And let's face it, COVID has done nothing to improve our social skills. We're a bit rusty. Something else that I notice about adults is how hard it is for us to receive compliments. It was nothing, or it's just my job. What's the message, really, to that person? Well, as an educator, I can verify that this past year of coming back in person did not go as smoothly as we all expected. I think we just thought we'd pick back up and just move on. It did not happen. So the last day of school this year, my team had a meeting, and a few members went to the front, and they put a medal around our necks one by one. And then in front of the whole group, they told us why they love working with us and what they value about us as humans. I cannot think of a better way to end a difficult year. When my Georgia Bulldogs play, I love it. When they start jumping up and down, go dogs, up and down, <laughs> up and down on the field, getting the crowd into it, they know the true power of encouragement. So here's my wondering. What if we began to consciously notice and acknowledge at least three people a day in our lives. And I'm thinking, you know, it's pretty easy to praise little children. So I'm thinking anywhere from 12 up, because we know those teenagers don't earn a lot of praise every day. So I'm thinking anywhere from 12 up. What if we started making a conscious effort to do that? One year, I was out in the parking lot of my high school and um, was just working in a storage pod, and I was the only one in sight until... This young man came trudging up the stairs late for class and in no hurry to get there. Hair, here, earbuds, skateboard, pants. <laughs> he was going to walk right by me. So it was going to be awkward to not say something, but I didn't know him and it was going to feel a little awkward to say something. But I made up my mind before he got there. And he walked by and I said, you have the best hair. And he really did. He really, truly did. And he stopped, and he pulled out his earbuds and said, thank you, so do you. <laughs> now, he trundled off to class 
hopefully. <laughs> um, all bets are off. But I was left with a lot of thoughts about what I might have missed and what encounters we just miss on a daily basis if we're not looking for them. I think that if we start looking for opportunities every day, we're going to find that they are everywhere. The very day I received the invitation to speak here, my family and I went to a play that evening to celebrate. And as we were leaving, and it's pretty late, I noticed this gentleman washing down the water fountain, whistling and smiling. And I walked right past him. And then I literally thought about what, thought about what I wanted to talk about today. I stopped, I turned around, and I just said something like, you know, it's been a long day for you, I'll bet, and you're still smiling and whistling, and thank you. And as I walked off, he said, hey, did you like the play? And I said, yes, it was as good as the one in London that I saw. And he began telling me about London being on his bucket list. And we talked for just a minute, but as I walked away with my family, I turned to them and I said, see, guys, there are opportunities everywhere if we look for them. And speaking of this event, this is a write-in that I've just put in today because someone did something kind for me earlier. I came out of the bathroom right before coming on stage, and let's just say um, I was showing more in the back than I should have been. <laughs> and this woman changed the trajectory of my life. <laughs> she came up and she said, stop, 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 stop. And she pushed my, helped me, and my unmentionables were covered. So, you know, kindness, kindness and kind words, we just never know who's going to need them on any given day, even a TED speaker. How many of you have ever heard of Hilda Hamlin? Some of you may recognize her better as Miss Rumphius, the lupine lady from Barbara Cooney's beautiful children's book. Well, in the late 1800s, Hilda was in England, living in England, and she was telling her grandfather, Grandpa, I want to be just like you when I grow up. I want to travel the world and live in a house by the sea. And he said, Hilda, that's, that's a, those are good goals, but the, you're forgetting what's most important. You need to create beauty in your world and leave beauty behind. Well, decades later, Hilda had immigrated to the United States. She's in her 60s, and she's reflecting on her life, and she realizes, I have indeed traveled the world, and I live in a house by the sea in Maine. And then she realized, I don't think I've done enough of the third, the most important. So she had always missed her native lupines that grew in England and were not native here. And she sent off her seeds, and she began walking through the countryside and along the cliff tops, gathering seeds. And every summer, she would gather them, the seeds from the flowers that had just bloomed, and those were the seeds she would scatter out the next year. Her friends tell tales, would tell tales about her flinging handfuls of seeds out the open windows in the back seat when they would drive her around Maine. To this day, in Maine, the wildflowers put on a show in early June every year. Hilda's lupines figure prominently among them. I think her grandpa will be proud. Well, what if our lupine seeds just consisted of acknowledging the people in our lives every day in a positive, kind way? that is also authentic. Desmond Tutu said, do your little bit of good wherever you are, because those little bits of good together overwhelm the world. If just everyone in this auditorium right now decided to make this a practice every day, I think the world would start getting a little bit overwhelmed. We never know what our kindness will lead to. One summer I was working in a art camp for elementary students. We were meeting in a high school. And one afternoon when everyone had gone, I was still in my room working, and I overheard the two custodians in the hall just remarking that there's so much more trash for this kind of thing than usual high school students, and how it takes one room, takes up their whole bin, and they have to empty it between rooms. So I heard them trundle off down the hall, and I had trash bags in my room, and so I just threw my trash in, and tied it up and put it in the hall. And I noticed the classrooms down from me had their doors open as well. So I went in and did the same thing for everyone, maybe five minutes. And 
I went back in, and as I was packing up, they came back, and one of them came in and said, did you bag up all this trash for us? And I just said something like, yeah, um, we appreciate how much harder it must be to work with these little kids, to clean up after these little kids than big ones. I left. The next day, I came into work, and on my desk was a bottle of flavored water and a Dollar Tree frame with a certificate in it. And the certificate read, to the best woman who helped us with the trash. <laughs> they didn't even know my name. And yet that certificate, out of all the ones I've received in my life, stands out. Once I was leaving a grocery store, and I had paid the clerk, and as I walked away, he said, you're a kindergarten teacher. I was like, how did you know? And usually I have stuff on my clothes, you know, that show, but not that time. And he said, well, you said, I like how you counted back the change. <laughs> and he said, my kindergarten teacher used to say that. And he had this huge smile on his face. We never know where our words will land. That person in the concert behind you might feel a little awkward, but you also never know what they might need to hear that very minute. If you've ever flown, you've likely encountered the crying child. Nobody likes it. Who likes it even less? Those parents that are desperately trying to quiet their child. Quiet their child. Well, what if instead of those inward eye rolls and that <clears throat> thing in our chests, what if instead we just turned to them and said, it must be really hard to travel with little ones and you're doing a good job. I guarantee you, our stress level would go down. And who knows, if the parent's stress level goes down, it might even impact their child. We never know. So, in education, we had this thing called, I do, we do, you do. And I'm fixing to use it on you right now. <laughs> so first, I do. You guys have been the best audience. You've laughed, you've made me feel heard, like my message matters. Thank you for that. And by the way, I really mean that. Now it's time for We Do. An event like this takes so many volunteers and so many hours behind the scenes. We will never see most of the people responsible for this today. Let's thank them. All right, it's time for you do. Now, you may be thinking, I'm shy. I, I don't talk to people. I'll give you permission to whisper, okay? Because I just want you to remember, this is about putting little bits of girl, good out into the world. Now, there are people sitting near you, and I know it's early in the day, but you've probably noticed, whether you know them or not, something about them. In just a bit, I'm going to turn you loose, and I want you to tell them something kind. Maybe their laugh, their smile, their cool shoes, their hair, whatever. I just want you to tell them something nice. And if you see an odd man out, don't you dare let them get left out, okay? And just to prove that I'm going to, I, I walk the talk, I walk the walk and talk the talk, I'm doing it too with someone on stage that I just met. So, you ready? Go. Wow. Wow. By the way, the person that came out to talk with me, the first thing I did to her when I met her was punch her in the chin, honestly. So I'm really glad I had that moment. I just saw showers of lupine seeds and petals floating down around us with all of your kind words. Now, before I go, I just have one more ask of you. It is so easy to come to things like this and be moved, motivated, touched, and then when the door closes, so do your thoughts and your memories of it. I'm asking you not to do that with this today. I'm asking you to 
deliberately every single day say something kind, uplifting, positive, complimentary to at least three adults, 12 and above, in your own life or not in your own life. I want you to make a point to think about it every day. Think of all the lupines and all of the good acts that will go out into the world, our bits of good. Let's do this. Bless your hearts. Thank you.